good afternoon so no good no good afternoon ah so how many had good lunch then you should not sleep so anyhow people having less lunch will be sleeping because they are always hungry okay today i'd like to thank the management for uh, organizers for calling me and uh, asking me to take a topic on regulatory condition, uh, considerations for uh, clinical trials that's happening in india so what i want to start with is that have you seen this figure how many have you seen this photo might be similar one is it complete is it complete yes or no how many yes is it complete yes or no is this figure complete yes or no why humans are not there still so humans still are not there so fully so this clinical trial regulations guidelines or evolving thing they don't stop from getting fully evolved they are dynamic they are changing day by day year by year region by region the reason for this is that some regulation some rule comes what happens we are humans we do something we read between the lines so regulator want to bring more strict guidelines or regulations so like this they are changing constantly so when we are going to come to this stage of complete evolution into human beings are we going to come yes or no we are not going to evolve completely we are not coming to this stage where we can say my regulations my rules are bus today we are going to stop from growing this comes we come to this stage only when we stop doing clinical trials completely stop the clinical trials no need to have any regulation no need to have any rules so these are constant dynamic changes that are happening in regulations of clinical trials usually in india we follow two most important regulations and rules one is uh, good clinical practices as per the icjcp and other thing is that our own rules that we have that is new drug and clinical trial rules what i'm going to tell today is just i'm going to summarize what is happening what has happened what is happening what might happen that will be very less so okay so now when we whenever we talk about these things so when did we start our rules our rules started way back in 1945 as drugs and cosmetic rules they were present no we are talking mostly specifically we are confining ourselves to clinical trials we are not going to talk much about manufacturing these things so when we talk about clinical trials the rules that we had was since 1945 we had the rules and what happened was that there was so much concern about safety for the volunteer who is participating in a clinical trial and compensation that we give him when there is some sort of injury or death so with this in mind what happened was that 2012 there was a public uh, interest litigation which was filed in supreme court which has come out with a ruling stating that in 2013 october 21st supreme court has opined that clinical trial should be based on all relevant aspects of safety and efficacy particularly in assessment of risk versus benefit to the patients innovation vis-a-vis -vis existing therapeutic options and unmet medical need in the country so with this in that ruling from the supreme court there was some amendments was just after the ruling what happened was there, there was only some amendments amendments for compensation amendment for safety still there was some sort of uh, risk to the volunteer who was participating in a clinical trial so finally what happened with the deficiencies in regulation of clinical trials there was a report by dr uh, ranjit roy choudhury that is the 59th uh, report of parliamentary standing committee on health and family welfare where they have said that we are going to come out with a new rules replacing the existing one that started way back in 1945 so on february 1st 2018 a draft rules for uh, new drugs and clinical trials was uh, released into the public for public consultation and finally 
this came into effect from march 19 2019 so just i am going to summarize what were the rules that have come out in 2019 and then i am going to say what has happened to the rules in form of amendments to the 2019 new drugs and clinical trial rules so this came in 2019 march 19 they were implemented from this date but one chapter was not effective from that date that chapter uh, four that deals about the ethics committees for uh, biomedical health and research it was effective after 180 days of this coming into being that is after 19th march 2019 after 180 days the chapter 4 regarding ethics committees for biomedical research has come into effect but all the other chapters have come into effect from this date on so in this new drug and clinical trial rules when we talk about chapters we talk about there are around 13 chapters and 107 rules see and every time i'm mentioning it is a rule a rule means if you don't follow a rule you are going to get punished remember this you don't follow a rule you are going to get punished you have to go on left side of the road you have to wear helmet you don't go on left side you may not be punished but something can come and hit you accident can happen if you don't wear helmet same thing can happen but if you wear a helmet you can be protected you have to follow the rules or else you can be punished you can be fined you can be debarred anything can happen if you don't follow any of this that are published in new drug and clinical trial rules so we have 13 chapters with 107 rules the first chapter is a preliminary one and we have two rules here the first rule is short title commencement and applicability the second rule is like we have in icih gcp a word called glossary is a chapter instead of that thing here we have second rule that has definitions there are around 36 words which have been defined very uh, cl clearly in our rules so sec chapter 2 that is authorities and officers it's uh, rule number 3 4 and 5 central licensing authority delegation of powers of central licensing authority so when we come to third chapter deals with ethics committees for clinical trials bio availability and bio equivalence studies in this we have rule 6 to rule 14 these are the uh, rules that we have for ethics committee which are involved in overseeing the clinical trials bio availability and bio equivalence study so rule 6 starts about requirement for ethics committee rule 7 constitution of the ethics committee rule 8 how do you register your ethics committee rule 9 what's the validity period so this is going to it has changed first there was no validity period then it became one year then it has become three years now at present the validity period for an ethics committee registration is five years then uh, 10 renewal of the registration that is going to expire rule 11 functions of ethics committee rule 12 how do you conduct the meetings how do you receive the documents how do you conduct the meeting how do you give out your uh, approval all this will be spoken about in rule number 12 proceedings of ethics committee rule 13 so ethics committee means now they receive some documents they give out the documents and in clinical trial what you have to learn is that it is written it is done if it is not written you don't find a document it is not done so it's again a double edged sword you just write something and put it there it can be accepted but there should be some support so whatever when you receive a document will they'll be asking for any supportive evidence for that any justification for that so it's a double edged sword having a document what is that so proceedings records how do you maintain the records what records you maintain for the ethics month how long you maintain it's all in chapter thir- sorry rule number 13 14 talks about suspension or cancellation of ethics or registration of ethics company for a clinical trial these are the rules that have for chapter 3 uh, describing the role of ethics committees that are overseeing the clinical trials b and b studies chapter 4 which came to effect after 180 days of uh, of from 19th march 2019 so 15 rule is about ethics committee constitution registration suspension or cancellation these are the rules that we have for ethics committees that are going to oversee 
the biomedical and health research. Now we have chapter 5. Chapter 5 is again divided into part A and part B. Part A talks about the rules that, that we have for following or conducting a clinical trial. How do you conduct a clinical trial? How do you get the approval? What form you have to apply for approval? In what form you get your uh, uh, NOC? All these things will be discussed clearly, very well written in part A that is from 19 rule number 19 to rule number 24 up to 19 to 30 are the rules that talk about how you conduct a clinical trial. Then we have part B that talk us, talks about uh, a bio cleanse and bio availability center, how you are going to have a bio BIBE study center. All these are spoken about in part B of rule number chapter 5, part B of chapter 5 that is about the bioavailability and bio cleanse study that is from rule number 31 to rule number 38. Then chapter 6 most important one which is a major uh, thing that has been in our rules we do not find this anywhere in the world. This chapter tells how you have to deal with any AE that happens in a clinical trial, any SAE, any AE, how, how we should do, how we should proceed, who should proceed, who are involved, who is the main person who is looking after the medical management of the SAE or AE that is happening in a clinical trial, how do you compensate him, everything is very clearly given in chapter 5 that is from rule number 39 to 43. This is again argumented by how you calculate the compensation that you are paying to a volunteer after various types of SAEs that occur in a clinical trial. Chapter 7, it talks about the BAB study center, how they are going to establish a BAB study center, what is the NOC that talks about BAB center, how they are going to conduct a study, what are the conditions on which a BAB center conducts a bioavailability bio cleanser. That is all well discussed in this chapter uh, 7, which talks about the BAB study center, rules 45 to sorry, rules 44 to rule 51. Then from chapter 8 onwards, mostly we go into manufacturing side, which for a clinical trial are not much important. They are important because the product that we get to do a clinical trial are based on this. So chapter 8 talks about manufacture of new drugs or investigational new drugs for clinical trial, BAB study, uh, BAB study. This for only examination, test and analysis. This is only for examination, test and analysis. Then we have chapter, chapter 9 that is manufacture of drugs in India for test analysis of BAB, BAB studies or clinical trial. Then chapter 9 is of importing the drug. How do you import a drug for conducting clinical trial, BA or BA study for examination, test and analysis. This is talked about in chapter 9. Chapter 10, import or manufacture of new drugs for sale of distribution. So each and every chapter has different roles and rules that we have to follow. Chapter 11, import or manufacture of unapproved new drugs for treatment of patients in government hospital and government medical institutions. Sometimes when it is requi specifically required for a single patient, how do you import the drug? How do you do it? How do you use the drug? How do you destroy the leftover drugs is very well written in this chapter. Chapter 12, Amendments of Drugs and Constitution uh, and Cosmetic Rules 1947 and Chapter 13 talks some miscellaneous items like uh, pre-submission meeting, post-submission meeting, all this. So totally we have 13 chapters and 107 rules. Out of this, for a clinical trial conduct, Chapter 3 that talks about ethics committees for uh, clinical trials, VAB studies. Chapter 5 that talks about how to do a study. We have part A and part B. Part A talks about uh, clinical trials and part B talks about uh, BAB studies. And we have chapter 6 and chapter 7 which are compensation and BAB study center. So these are the things that are very important that you should know line by line when you are doing this. So then we have some uh, this just a summary. Then we have some schedules. 8 schedules that are important. In this 8 schedules, first schedule talks about general principles and practices of clinical trial, like general principles, how to 
uh, analyze and design a study how to what are the methodology for drug development conduct of a clinical trial analysis and report uh, second schedule is the most important thing which talks about requirements and guidelines for permission to import or manufacture of new drugs for sale or to undertake a clinical trial so when you compare these rules with that of icgcp here we have uh, how what are the uh, requirements for conducting phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 animal, animal toxicology requirements animal pharmacology fixed dose combination stability testing for new drugs so we have some tables third schedule talks about conduct of a clinical trial here we have responsibilities of sponsor investigator ethics committee you just imagine these are a, these are a chapters in icgcp so in this we have uh, how to write your uh, uh, protocol how to write your investigator brochure how to write your informed consent documents everything is told in the form of tab uh, tables fourth schedule requirements and guidelines for conduct of ba and ve studies of new drugs or investigational new drug this talks about how a BAB center should be what are the requirements what is the manpower needed what are the equipment needed what are the various types of sops needed everything is discussed in detail in uh, fourth schedule fifth schedule is post marketing assessment of a drug sixth is an important thing uh, fee payable for license permission and registration imagine before this coming into consideration whatever you wanted to do was free so once this has come everything what you want to do has to be uh, paid for so the seventh schedule you it's a very peculiar thing in india where you can calculate the compensation any layman even a layman can calculate compensation how much can be paid to a volunteer so what are the conditions in which a compensation is paid for almost all the uh, serious adverse events formula everything a layman can sit down and within 10 20 minutes he can calculate no need to have any expertise like that this uh, and you can find this sort of guidelines nowhere i think western countries might fo follow this guidelines for payment of compensation like in case of death how much you have to pay you just can calculate it by just seeing the formulas then in case of permanent disability in case of congenital anomaly of birth defect in case of chronic life threatening disease and reversible essay is as it is resolved so everything is very easy even for a layman to read this and calculate the compensation eighth schedule has so many tables that has to be used while conducting a study even while even for manufacturing and clinical trials so this is about 2019 uh, new drug and clinical trial rules that has come out so as i was telling in the initial time the regulations and rules for clinical trials are constantly changing and they are dynamic so we have around uh, this is just a summary so we had around uh, the last amendment to the new drugs and clinical trial rules 2019 was 23rd may 11 i think it is correct madam after that i didn't update myself so the first one came out in 2019 march 19 that's the main document then 2000 21 august 31 there's small minor changes like uh, either clinical part or both has been replaced by either clinical part or analytical part or both then the next one stem cell derived product is replaced by cell or stem cell derived product this happened in 22 january 13 then 2022 jan 28 so the word designated authority has been replaced by designated registration authority regulation uh, this word has been omitted central licensing authority has become designated registration authority so next this is the one from here we had major changes so 2022 february 9 usually what happens during drug development process you do preclinical you come to phase one you complete it you apply for phase two you get your approval complete it then you go to phase three you get marketing authorization until then manufacturer doesn't start manufacturing once he get marketing authorization with him as a hard copy only he starts manufacturing but what happened was that during the covid pandemic so what happened for here is in the interest of public to meet the emergent situation arising out of covid 19 so these manufacturers were allowed to manufacture the drug 
manufacture and stock the drug for sale or distribution under the provisions in this act, but only after getting authorization from the regulatory only he has to distribute or sell them. So, manufacture and stock the new drug subject to the condition that licensee shall sell or distribute the new drug only after obtaining the permission from our regulatory agency. So, another amendment was there in October 14, 2002, where timelines have been given. You apply for a uh, NOC or for a application you put up, there are timelines that were given that you do not get the approval from, let us say like ethics committee you apply for registration, you do not get approval within 14 days, it is deemed that you have approved, you get, you can start working like that, various timelines have been given. So, test document, so 2023 March 9, non-clinical testing, until now we had first priority animal studies. So, animals are becoming now more important. Why? Most of them are getting extinct and human population is growing, 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 growing. So, now animals are taking precedence, more safety towards animals. So, animal studies can be taking back seat instead of those, we can have to concentrate more on other types of studies for non-clinical testing like cell based assay, organ chip and microphysiological system, sophisticated computer modeling, other human biology based test methods. You cannot get your safety data from this, then you can go for animal testing. So, 2023 March 11, we have a new word coming into this that is clinical research organization here. So, until now everyone were doing clinical trials. From this date onwards, you have to do anyone who does a clinical trial has to be registered and their own regulations have come up as chapter 5a. It is CRO. We have same. So, ninth schedule talks about the guidelines for CRO. So, we have, as I have told you, we have eight schedules, but ninth schedule has been inserted where we are going to talk about documents required for registration of clinical. So, these are the amendments as I was telling drugs, rules, and regulations are a dynamic process. Once this was approved in 2019, March 19, there were some amendments which we are for. So, just in another few minutes, the same way I am going to finish about ICHGCP. So, it was formulated and the decision to take ICHGCP into the uh, as a guideline for conducting clinical trials started in 2000, sorry, 1995 and on 2010, June 1996, it became effective. This is about ICHGCP. So, that is what R1, step 4. Then, from 96 to 2006, there was no revision of the ICH GCP and in 2016, November 6, we got out a document that was R2, that is a revision to R1 as, a, as an addendum to the R1 with some minor changes. Then finally, in 2023, 19 May, we got a new document R3, which is in public domain for consultation. Anyone of you can go through this, read it you have some doubts, you have some suggestions. So, you have a joke circulating ar around in uh, uh, social networking. Somebody comes and asks you, do you want to buy Air India? They say, we can't buy. It. Then somebody buys Air India, then you start all complaining, why did you sell Air India to that person? So, you are given an opportunity to buy Air India, you did not utilize it. So, when you did not utilize the opportunity, we have no right to ask whom it is sold to. So, you have an opportunity now, go through it, read it, you have to advise, you have an, a good advice, to, you can mail them, you can correct them if something is wrong. So, again, we will skip this. Uh, ICH GCP has uh, 8 chapters, first chapter is uh, glossary, we have around 66 or 67 terms that have been defined here, then chapter Second is principles of ICH GCP, you have uh, 13 principles, then third chapter is in institutional review board independence ethics company. So, the terminology uh, of ethics company is changing as per the reason and as per the comfort of that region. It has uh, 3.1 to 3.4, the roles of investigator 4.1 to 4.13, the sponsor as he is the one who is having major responsibility, he has 5.0 to 5.23. Clinical trial protocol and protocol amendments 6.1 to 
investigative brochure 7.1 to 7.5 essential documents for correcting conducting a clinical trial 8.1 to 8.5 this is about r2 so what is happening in r3 so purpose of the update modernizing technology is going to involve so much in a clinical trial the main purpose is to reduce the timelines and make it more safer for the drug to come into the market so sorry so we have r2 eight chapters but when we come to r3 we have introduction principles of ich gcp there is a major change in principles of ich gcp 13 has become 11 or 10 i don't remember exactly 10 or 11 principles and some principles have been combined and some principles have come up in this one then annex one it talks about institutional review board not much changes investigator sponsor not much changes and as we are going into the technological age our life is going to become technological no need to move out of my place so we have data governance now data 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 now we have metadata word also coming into picture so data governance investigator and sponsors this is a new chapter that has been inserted in r3 glossary appendix a is investigator brochure clinical trial protocol now we have appendix c that is essential records now we are talking until now about essential documents that document word has been replaced by records. Now, we do not talk about essential documents, it is essential records. We do not talk about source documents, we talk about source records. So, significant changes, new section is added on data life cycle. What is data life cycle? Generation of data, collection of data, processing data, storing data, managing the data, analysis, analyzing data, visualizing the data and at the end, we have interpretation of the data. This is a data cycle. This is going to govern our future data which you generate, data that is needed for analysis. All these things are most important because this is going to give the final report. So, major revamp in data governance. So, it encourages ex exploration of technology, encouraging engagement and inclusion. We now talk about patient centric studies where we are going to involve patient right from the time you are going to design your study to the time you are going to report the study. So, summary. New novel approaches to clinical trial design and conduct have potential to streamline drug development. So, we have seen what some conditions can change us. COVID has changed us very much like the drug it takes 10 to 12 years for it to come to market right from the time I think I have to develop a drug. That process has been drastically cut. Various reasons are there for why it was done. Nothing like you made something, you do not want this data, it is not like that. So, there are various reasons why we can get down that 10 to 12 years to 1 to 2 years. We are not cutting the corners, we are not doing anything under the table. In this situation, let us pray that the same is going to continue in future. So, novel approaches to clinical trial design and conduct have potential to streamline drug development and increase the convenience of clinical trials for parts. So, almost we think of participants who are in a clinical trial, it is for them. The intent of revised guideline is to facilitate innovations in clinical trials, design and conduct while at the same time provide guidelines to help ensure participant safety and that the clinical trial produces reliable results. So, this is about what are the guidelines, what are the rules that we have to follow in clinical trial conducting in India. So, we have both uh, ICH GCP and new drug and clinical trial rules. ICH GCP is getting or, or changing itself drastically, it might take another one year for it to be implemented. Thank you. Really it was a wonderful session. Thank you so much for sharing your vast experience and the insights on clinical trials. So would you please spare another five minutes or if you have any, I mean if audience have any sort of questions, you please take them and answer. I think they may not have questions. Yeah. <laughs> any questions? Uh, well, sir, uh, you were focusing on bioavailability and uh, bioequivalence. So, in case the drug is approved uh, outside uh, India, like peptide molecules nowadays, uh, so what is the, if it is an API, is the, uh, the peptide is RDNA source, but now the synthetic one when the companies are coming for bioequivalence study, what is the kind of the studies they have to do in India? So, whenever we do not have answer, we will call help. <laughs> so, I will deflect the question there. <laughs> Madam is sitting there. Yeah, ma'am. 
thank you, Dr. Prabhakar Edigaru, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, you have uh, really brought out the very essence um, of the NDCT rules and the current amendments to the NDCT rules and also um, the regulations regarding CROs which are in the office. You also brought forth uh, the ICH GCP and also I want to uh, inform the gathering that India too is revising its own GCP guidelines which has to be read in conjunction with the NDCT rules in 2019. Coming back to um, the nuances of this uh, new drugs and clinical trial rules, you have rightly pointed out that uh, ethics is the very basis um, of conducting a clinical trial and the principles of ethics have to be involved over the design of a clinical trial in monitoring the SAEs, payment of compensation, etc. So to add on to what you have already said that compensation is very unique to India and uh, Yes, uh, we did develop uh, these guidelines way back in 2013. Uh, we have made a formula for calculation of the compensation, etc. But uh, rather than saying it is India developed or in fact, it is though it's very unique in a way to say that it is administered, this rule is administered by a regulatory authority. Whereas in Britain, it is a pharmaceutical industry which govern uh, these compensation guidelines, they have come up with AIBP guidelines and they pay the compensation based upon uh, these guidance. The industry came out with their own guidance and they pay the compensation in this regard. And this is a, India too has developed certain guidelines uh, for uh, say, uh, subject expert committees where we talk of adaptive clinical trial design, quality by design and the GCP uh, like I said, will also be revamped to meet the international expectation on the declaration of Helsinki. Coming back to Madam's question on biosimilars, you must be talking of semaglutide. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, if your reference biologic is recombinant product and you are making a synthetic uh, uh, peptide, obviously the product for which uh, we have approved um, and we have good safety and efficacy data will become your RLD versus your synthetic peptide. When you talk of synthetic peptides, um, orthogonal characterization is important. The CMC is very, very important. The primary secondary structure of the amino acid sequence, that, that's the very basis. But glycosylation patterns, aggregates, is most important because they can cause, you know, immune-related immune uh, reactions, anti-drug antibody development, which have to be monitored. So USFDA has come up with certain guidelines uh, on how to develop these products. So has Europe come up with these guidelines. CDSU was not far behind. In 2021 itself, we have given a circular, issued a directive that these will be considered as subsequent new drugs. Meaning this, uh, there will be a abbreviated pathway for the development instead of doing a full blown clinical trial. Um, right now, I work for the subsequent new drug division and also for the new drug division. Madam is my colleague. So we are receiving applications in the semaglutide space. Um, of course, steriparatide too we approved. Uh, the comparisons were had to be done with the recombinant product. Uh, apart from CMC characterization, BAB uh, has to be conducted. Um, is what is the expert advice as of now. Uh, then followed by maybe clinical trial or maybe post-marketing. Uh, trials to understand its safety and comparability in terms of efficacy with the recombinant product. Yeah. So before so go with the answer. next uh, question, so so before going with the next question, uh, I request all the delegates to utilize the scanner provided on the screen to give your valuable feedback on each session. <coughs> I'm uh, Yege Prasad Nepane from. Uh, uh, Minister of Industry, Commerce and Supply, Government of Nepal, look after pharmaceutical division as a chairperson. In this uh, 2023 May, the inclusion of a ninth uh, schedule, that is uh, with respect to contract research organization. I was a little uh, en enthusiastic to know the uh, prevailing uh, roles and responsibilities of this uh, CRO and also where uh, where and how and by whom they are regulated and also 
uh, what happens when the CRO comes up with the findings and outcomes? This, this will be interesting for me to know. Thank you. So most of the regulations are given. I just told the brief headings. We have to go through the full data because everything is given as a table. I'll talk with you because <laughs> time may be constrained.